Chris Zorich was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. I kind of grew up in that environment where uh, I really didn't have a lot. Um, there were times I remember when we used to have to go through garbage to get food, like garbage cans in the alley. And so I remember that, you know, I always promised myself that I, if, if, if I ever got a really good job, that I would help other people out, like me. That really good job turned out to be defensive tackle for the Chicago Bears. But it wasn't an easy journey being raised by his single mother. There were a lot of gangs, um, a lot of drugs. You know, oftentimes funny because I used to get harassed a lot and people used to beat me up. It's funny because I tell a story like, what, she used to beat you up? Well, it happened um, a lot of times. And, and the, the, the rough thing was that my mom was white, my father was black. I had never seen my father before, and I grew up in an area that was really rough. And so I got called names, my mom got called names, um, my, mom, my mom was mugged a lot. Chris attended Chicago Vocational High School and was a towering six foot one, 240 pound freshman. And although he watched the Bears every Sunday with his mom, Zora, she wouldn't let him play football. Her exact words were, I do not want my little baby getting hurt. So I didn't play at all my freshman year. And I didn't want to get involved in like the gangs and everything like that. So this was kind of a great opportunity for me. So she understood and she allowed me to play. But Chris's mom still refused to watch him play. It wasn't until the last game of my senior year where one of my teachers and my coach convinced her to come. And she watched the whole game like this, you know. And afterward, I had gotten a scholarship and everything. Afterward, she was like, why are you really good? I was like, wow, that's all I've been telling you. <laughs> like, I got a scholarship to go dirty. <laughs> like, my mom gets, she was like, I didn't think you were that good. I was like, thank you, mom. She attended every single game at Notre Dame. But four months before Chris was drafted by his hometown team, Zora passed away. He still credits her for teaching him the spirit of the Chicago Bears. I kind of knew everything about what it meant to be a Chicago Bear. Let's see if we can make it to the lake. Let's go for it. I knew about Walter Payton running through the neighborhoods for his United Way commercial. I, mean, I remember all those things as, as a kid growing up, and then all of a sudden I have a chance to put that C, or that helmet that has a C, on my head. It was a dream come true, and another dream was fulfilled when Chris put on a helmet next to his all-time favorite player, Mike Singletary. I had a chance to play with him in one of the games, and I don't feel that I would replace William Perry because he was paying. Uh, I came in and I'm sitting there and, and Mike Singletary is giving out the calls. I'm like, oh my God. Great, it's great, this is terrific. Goes call, break, get lined up. And all of a sudden he's like, Chris, Chris. I'm like, oh my God, he's yelling my name. This is great. This is awesome. Like, yeah, this, is, this is my best experience ever. He's like, Chris, Chris. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, oh, oh, you're in the wrong gap. You're in the wrong gap. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the wrong gap. And I probably got killed on the play. But that was like my most memorable experience with being a bear because it was like, here's my idol, like yelling my name in a game. I was done. As a bear, Chris kept his promise to always give back to communities in need. He was best known for handing out Thanksgiving turkeys to underprivileged families. We used to deliver them the Tuesday before Thanksgiving because that's the day we were off. And so that's before they have GPS on the phones, but we used to, I mean, the foundation I was involved in, we used to get together maps and everything, and they would come to Soldier Field and we would hand them maps and they would take these huge, huge grocery bags and deliver them to various families throughout the, throughout the city. And really kind of wanted to show kids that, you know, there's more to life than just maybe being an athlete. He is still conveying that message every day, even though his charity does not exist anymore. A year ago, Chris became the athletic director for Prairie State College in Chicago Heights, responsible for 150 student athletes. We're a two-year community college. I mean, our goal is to get our student athletes um, ready to go on to that four-year institution. Um, and one of the things I love about Prairie State College is that a lot of these kids kind of came from the same environment that I came from. It's really gratifying. Um, you know, again, if it's you know patting somebody on the back because. You know, they, they just uh, won the championship. 
or having to scold someone because you know, they, they want to get exact grades in the class. And it's, it's a whole gambit. So I really feel like I'm the dad of 150 student athletes, which is awesome. My ego is not that big. It really kind of gets their attention uh, because when they see it, it's kind of like, oh, are those all you? And I'm like, well, yeah, this is what I'm playing. They're like, oh, really? And so then all of a sudden, they're paying attention. Helping students achieve success academically, athletically, and in life has given former number 97 a new purpose. I honestly thought when, when I walked away from, from when, when I retired from the NFL, I don't think I was having anything, anything to, to do with sports. You know, but it, it's fascinating because even though we don't have football here at Prairie State yet, um, you know, it, it, it's exciting because I have, you know, uh, nine or ten other sports that I feel just as passionate about. And I'm just excited about our men's tennis team that I am, that was about our football team. So when I was in the stands and playing with Texas, cheering them on and nationals, I felt like I was on the sideline with the Bears, kind of cheering the Bears on.